Welcome to the Fall Play YouTube channel. Hey everybody, can you believe it's another Thursday? Uh, and today we're going to be talking about the phone calls and in particular, why did the state focus in on Brendan Dassey? I think we have some uh, real uh, insightful um, things that we want to talk to you about. So, um, yeah. So you have one more call for us, Christy, on this topic? I do. Um, it's not really significant. It's nothing mind blowing. It's just the moment that Stephen find it's the moment we all find out that law enforcement has brought Brendan in. It's that Monday evening, and this is how Stephen finds out. Are you going home by attorney? No, I have company here. Who? I had somebody here all that while. Who? Girl, Kentucky. And you couldn't call a lawyer. No. Why? Because so they were talking. Talking about what? Talking about what? Talking just. Yeah? Yeah. They got Brendan down in the police station. Why? Uh, something to do with you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Right now? I don't know. He must not be home yet. Nobody can get any information at this point. Nobody can talk to Barbara. Nobody really knows what's going on other than... This is the night before that phone call that you played. So at this point is when Brendan is telling them about legs and fire. He is currently, I believe, at Fox Hills. Is that where we decide he is on February 27th, Jeff? I think so. I'm pretty sure it's the 27th that he's there too. And uh, that's the night he's telling his story about the legs and the fire. Yeah, so just to go, just to go over the timeline of this, um, uh, the property bond was due to uh, be ruled on, on on what date? Uh, February? They, they didn't have it. Well, you got to back up a little bit more. Yeah. Stephen went yeah, let's, to court. Let's, let's get the timeline. Let's back up a little bit more. Stephen had a court date for January 17th. Um, we don't know. We don't have any calls. The last call we have is January 11th, and we don't have any other calls until January 23rd because Stephen has um, surgery. Um, kidney, kidney stones, is that what he had? I believe kidney stones. Um, gallbladder. Or gallbladder, I think. I'm pretty maybe. sure it was kidney stones. Um, okay, maybe. Okay. Um, so he had the kidney stones. He's in the hospital. So we don't have any phone calls from the 12th to the 22nd. So we do know that he was supposed to be going to court on the 17th. And on the 17th was when um, the judge was going to hear his request for a reduction in bail. And he denied the request for a reduction in bail. And I believe at that point, Eric Loy asked him for a property bond instead, because at this point, it's half a million cash. And the judge agrees to consider a property bond. He basically says, get all your stuff together, um, submit it, we'll have a hearing, and I'll make a decision at that time. So that hap that's what happens on January 17th. The calls pick back up on January 23rd. And from January 23rd until February 21st, 22nd-ish, all we hear about in almost every single phone call that Stephen has is he's asking about where is Alan at with the paperwork? How, you know, what's going on with this bond paperwork? Because the sooner they get it done, the sooner it can be submitted and a date can be requested. In the meantime, there was another thing we... We, we we missed, we skipped. Marie Avery, the Marie Avery scandal pops up while all this property bond stuff is going on. I believe that was one of Ken Kratz's attempts as well to, 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 to hinder Stephen getting out because... No doubt. The, no doubt. The, 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 com the original complaint against Stephen with Marie Avery was in August of 2004 and it was unfounded. No, invest you know, no charges were brought. The investigation found nothing. Marie Avery was an uncooperative witness. Um, she kept saying nothing happened, so they let it go. It's actually Ken Kratz who alerts the Brown County DA's office and says that he should reinvestigate this. So it's Ken Kratz that tries to get more against Stephen. Ken Kratz did everything he could to make Stephen look like a monster and unsafe in society and that he just should not be a free man. And Marie, the, Marie Avery was another one. So all that goes on. But he, he's working on this property bond. He's staying on top of Alan and Dolores and everybody the best he can. He finally gets all that paperwork together. Dean Strang has 
become his attorney. Dean Strang submits that paperwork on Friday, February 24th. Stephen finds out about it on Saturday, February 25th. On Monday, February 27th, they expect to hear something from the judge on a date for the property bond hearing. And that's when we find out later on that day that Brendan is with law enforcement. Even later that evening on, I believe it's the, the next day on February 28th, um, the day that Stevens heard Brendan said there was legs in the fire and whatnot. Stephen also talks to Debbie later and Debbie heard on the radio that Judge Willis was going to schedule a court date for next week for Stephen's bond hearing. So we know things were moving and I believe that Brendan being pulled down on the 27th, forced into his story and then arrested on March 1st was really to stop Stephen from getting out to destroy Stephen's alibi because they knew they, depending on who, what your theory is and who was involved, did, they knew their case was as weak as could be and that the evidence, there was enough to prove out and to bring no more reasonable doubt. Well, and, and they also, <clears throat> oh, sorry. They also used oh, a technique, a portion of the read technique or used a, a slight variation of the read technique on Brenda, which at that point is already into law that they're not supposed to do. I would also like to point out that today, from what I've heard, um, they actually use Brenton's confession as an example of what not to do. Right, with a minor or <laughs> a disabled minor, yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, here's your sign. Yeah, you know, and to, to me, to me, to amplify what you guys just said, um, look what they did to Brendan, right? They, it's, it's, Teresa went missing on October 1st. Uh, 31st. Brendan is interviewed, sorry, yes, thank you. October 31st. Um, they interview Brendan. His first interview is in Krivitz on November 6th. November 6th. They don't talk to him again until this late February day, what, the tw uh, 27th to 28th. And when they bring him in, they keep him, right, for an extended period because they're right, you know, they're, they're, on, the, they're on the precipice, the precipice of this, oh, shit. Uh, and, that, and that, oh, shit thing is, oh, my God, Stephen might get released on bail. As many people have many people have said uh, that we also didn't touch on was they first tried to get Jody to turn on right and we have we have those calls we have those calls too maybe we talk about those calls a little bit in a minute um, but she wouldn't turn right they actually they actually went and they played for Jody one of the calls um, between Stephen and Debbie Klum. correct uh, in a, in a, in, a, in an effort to try and turn Jody as a witness for the state to, to, to try and perhaps um, testify at trial that he beat her uh, and, uh, you know, all the other mistreatments that he, that he may or may not have, uh, have, have done to her. But Jody wouldn't flip. Jody was very much in love with, uh, with Stephen. And, and uh, you, can, you can tell that by how much it hurts her to hear the Debbie Klump calls. Uh, and that's a source of... Uh, that's a source of, um, you know, um, rockiness in their relationship over the next few months, isn't it, Chris? It is. <clears throat> it, it is. Um, and almost, I'm quite honestly, I'm so tired of hearing Chuck and, I mean, Steve and Jody fight about Debbie. I mean, it's pointless because, <laughs> it, I mean, and Deb, Stephen's trying to tell Jody that, I mean, to sum it up, Stephen's trying to say, listen, I had no interest in that woman. You know, maybe for a fleeting second in the minute in the beginning, because I didn't know where things were at with you. But honestly, I was using her. She's somebody to talk to. It's a phone bill I don't have to pay, and she's doing things she for was, me. She was the only one, really. I mean, she. I mean, uh, God bless her soul. Dolores was trying to do stuff, and Alan was trying to do stuff, but yeah, she just wasn't <laughs> particularly was, effective. She's like an old lady. <laughs> I mean, Debbie was chasing her tail too, but at least she was, at least she was running while she was chasing her tail. Dolores <laughs> and Alan were kind of like walking in a circle chasing her tail. Debbie was, <laughs> Debbie was doing everything she could. Debbie was thinking, I mean, Debbie was thinking of some outlandish stuff, like crazy stuff on what to do, but at least she was yeah. trying. 
I mean, definitely thinking outside the box. Yeah, she definitely that nothing that girl does is inside the box. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> So, so to get to circle back to my, uh, you know, my my original point there was was that, um, you know, a, a law enforcement, as you said, Christy knows that case is weak. Um, they're they're working on Christy, they're working on Christy, working on Jody. Sorry about that, Christy. <laughs> no, no, no. They're working no, on Christy, right, no, sir. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> um, work. They're working on Jody. Uh, they they can't flip her. He's he's possibly gonna be uh, having a uh, uh, approved um, um, property bond in five days, and what do they do? They go get Brendan, and they effectively sequester him, sequester him for what three or three or four days, and coerce a confession out of him. Yeah, um, isn't that and, convenient? And, uh, isn't that convenient? Okay, and and this this leads us to sort of point three as to again. Well, ha, how could they be so sure that they were going to get something out of Brendan? Um, let me play a little bit of the his <clears throat> November 6th interview. Uh, before, that I, oh, go ahead. Before, you, yeah, go, before you do that, I want to say one thing. Because you said he was interviewed for the first time November 6th. Because yeah. from November 6th until February 27th, they tried everybody else. Brendan was last. They tried Brian. They tried Bobby. They tried Blaine. They tried Carla. They tried asking Carla if she saw any funny business around Stephen with her kids or if Stephen ever did anything. I mean, they tried to turn everybody. Brendan was also the last one. They tried. They had been trying since they day tried one. You Chuck and Earl. Yep. They tried everybody. Can I mean, Candy was willingly spouting whatever she wanted to spout. Jody wouldn't turn. Jody, they, Jody teetered a little bit. I think Jody said more than she'll ever admit. She said, "I'd love to be a fly on the wall for the parts that aren't recorded," because I know Jody. Right. Was, I'm convinced Jody was talking to them off the record. I'm convinced there's a phone call where I even noted Jody's acting very weird in this phone call. I think that she yeah. was trying to get information out of him for them. Oh, maybe so. Uh, I do. And I just, they, they tried everybody. Brendan was also the last one they went after. Well, maybe you can fill us in while we're, while we're on the topic of, uh, of Jody. Um, you know, how, how, do, how does that situation with Jody play out? We know he, she doesn't stick around, but what is sort of her timeline? As of right now, I am in the beginning of April. Um, they're still together, but you can hear that but she's out of jail. She get, When did she get oh, out of jail? Oh, she is out of jail. Out. She got out of jail on March 6th. Um, March 6th, you said? Yep, March 6th. It was a Monday. Um, and she goes to live where? She moves in with Dolores. And basically, because Stephen does not want her out of Dolores' sight, she's really not allowed to go anywhere or do anything unless Dolores is attached to her hip. And... We're a month into it, and Jody's about had it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we can't forget that. Um, <laughs> I, I hate to wander all over the place, but but Stephen did lose his first wife, um, yeah. Lori. Yeah. While he was and incarcerated. Who, who, while he was incarcerated, and, and who who did Lori go off and marry, baby? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you gonna Mr. tell us? <laughs> yeah, Mister Dassey. <laughs> Barb's husband, right? So Steve, Stephen lost his wife and yeah, Barb's ex. Isn't that, isn't that just that? Now, did, did, do you happen to know whether or not um, uh, uh, the order is sort of the sequence of operations there? Did it, did uh, Lori run off with uh, the, uh, the, the husband who became the ex after they ran off or were they divorced Yeah, I'm already? not sure, but they're still together. I'm pretty wow. sure Barbara and Pete were already divorced. Yeah, because she was on to Janda. So I'm pretty sure um, oh, yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure Barb was already a Yonda by the time Lori became a Dassey. I, I I won't swear to that. Somebody can correct me, yeah. but I, I'm almost positive. I'm not 100 yeah, percent so, though. But St Stephen Stephen knows that uh, the or at least in his in his experience, which might be limited, but uh, from what he's seen, uh, that it is possible to to lose somebody, and the people that people tend to jump to are people that they see every. 
Um, and, and that's why he, Stephen is very concerned about Chuck, right? Chuck, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, and I believe Chuck has made lewd. I, I believe there's more to that story. Stephen yes, has yes, reason. Stephen's yeah. got reason to not want Chuck around Jody. I think Chuck makes it blatantly obvious that he would. Chuck would like to be more than friends with Jody. And as she pointed yeah. out, everybody's Chuck's type. Yeah. All right. I mean, he did Debbie <laughs> Klemp for Steven, crying out loud. Steven knows that Chuck is a little bit of a creeper right and, uh, yes. and that he that he's that this is that, and, and and what's the reason why i brought this up is because in, in many of those calls Stephen is way more worried about uh about what's going to happen between chuck and jody than he is about his own defense yes, yes. <laughs> he's much more concerned <laughs> about that and making Once sure again, he, you know because he knows he didn't do it yeah yeah why else <laughs> he knows that his blood is not in that car. He knows that that Toyota key is not in his bed. And he knows he didn't murder. How can he possibly, how can this happen to him twice? Yeah, right. That's really his mindset. Think, he also thinks the politicians are going to help him and stick up for him. Yeah. Yeah. Him he, begging yeah, he, Dolores and Carla to call the candy store and get a hold of Penny Burnson. Yeah, and it's just it, he. he I'll, I'll give him credit for at least thinking of things to do. Uh, although the efficacy of those things, well, we're never going to pan out. He, <laughs> and it breaks my heart because, I mean, we're watching and listening to this so many years later, and we know how it ends, and we know that we know how it's going to go. But he, I forget who he's talking to, but in one of the phone calls, he says how. You know, the first time this happened to him, he kept his mouth shut and he's not going to do it this time. He wants his story out there. Nobody knew his side of the story last time. He thinks that's why he got convicted. So he thinks telling everybody his story from, you know, every possible outlet that he can is the best thing for him. And the more and more he talked to the media, the more and more himself. Just yeah. because of I mean, his poor way of communicating, not because he's guilty, but just because his poor way of communicating. Oh, exactly. That's that's what I was going to say. Uh, and and was that being that, able I, I think to answer, was a good idea. and that being able to answer quick on his feet. Right. Yeah. He just he he's he lives in that moment. He lives in the moment. If you listen to those call, if you listen to the calls where he talks to the media, it's that continuous stream of consciousness from the last three calls that he just made right <laughs> yeah and he, he does so, that with he does that with everybody he talks you know i i've yeah. heard him before you know go because i'll listen to the calls one right after the other so it'll be like six hours in between you know call three and call four and he starts talking to stacy about things that he talked to dolores about six hours ago and stacy yeah, Jody just blah blah blah, and Stacy's like, "What? What?" Because he just continues his thought. He doesn't give everybody the whole thought. He just, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we hear he, do he doesn't. He does not set context for anything. He's talking to people. Oh, I saw this. I, I saw lights down by Chucky. Well, who's who's Chucky, and where were you going? You saw lights down by Chucky. And what kind of lights? <laughs> Flashlights, what headlights, kind of light? airplane light. What kind of lights? You know what? Yeah. What kind of lights? <laughs> but yeah he's it hurt him it hurt him so much I know he doesn't I know he didn't see that at the time but it just his lawyers kept telling him and he didn't want to hear it he couldn't shut his mouth to save his life no yeah then can't. one of the calls doesn't Del Dolores yell at him or shut up your lawyer talked to me and she said shut up more than once <laughs> I believe she has to do that three different times and I believe <laughs> He gives an interview to the Associated Press to carry an finger on March 31st. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Jody spends a good 10 minutes telling Stephen how pissed off Dean Strang is. I'm pretty sure Dean Strang may have threatened to quit in that phone call. He was that furious Stephen talked to the media. 
Yeah. Stephen just worked yeah. that sparking in the media. If, if, if the thing is, if if he were, a, it would have been the right strategy if he were a good spokesman. You know, I don't I don't disagree with his instincts that it was the right thing to do, but he's just such a poor speaker. He sunk himself every. Correct. If this was you, you could have absolutely spoken to the media and told your side of the story. Stephen Avery, not so much. Well, just spoiler so. shows he's not a mastermind like the yeah. judges no. like yeah. to say that he is. He can't think quick on his feet. Not at all. So when the press throws him like a curveball, he is like not knowing how to process it properly. Yeah, his brain's not moving as fast as their questions are. He's he's not jumping from one subject to the other as quickly as they are. And they and I think he also has to really think about the way they ask. Sometimes their wording confuses him, and he answers the question wrong. I know what the answer to the question is because I've heard him give the answer to a million other people. But when the reporter asks him, and I can't really think of an instance, but he gives the wrong answer because he misunderstands the question. And then the, the reporter takes what he says wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just it's, a mess. It's a comedy of errors. It's a comedy of it errors. Is. It really is. It's a tragedy. It was hor it's horrible. So I notice our friend Sammy has joined us in the, in the chat. Okay, well, do you have no, any comments? Anything found, you might have heard so far? Well, I found uh, Christy's, you know, all of all of her transcripts of all of this is very accurate. I found her opinions to be really accurate. And as much as I don't care for Debbie, you know what? She really did. She went so far as to even make a fool of herself. She helped him get through a pretty rough time. You know? I don't know. I believe she truly she, thought she loved him. Yeah. She's kind of a tragic figure in this, yeah. Yep. But I'm yep. glad that she was able to talk. I'm glad she was there for him. You know, it, it's, I even feel for Jody. I mean, I know everybody's opinion of Jody, but now I'm seeing, I'm seeing what Jody went through. And I don't know when she leaves. I, I, we all know she does. But I, at this point in time, listening to what I'm listening to, I can't say I blame her. Yeah. Well, I hate that she turned is... on him. I hate that she turned on him and then lies later and goes on the media and, and just, and she blatantly lies. And I'm listening to the proof that she's lying when she talks to Nancy Grace or whoever she talks to later in life. And it, yeah, that's Nancy the Grace, part so. that pisses me off. But I can't blame her for leaving. Yeah. Well, we, you sent me a, uh, a DM about this uh, a while ago. Maybe this is a good time to bring it up. Uh, that um stevens after after his opportunity to get out on the property bond is denied his demeanor changes very much so he's angry he's he's angry he's pissed off he's i can't imagine what he was feeling at that moment and, and even and, and when it's first denied, he even still has like he's still he still has a little bit of hope. He even Jody's the only reason he's trying, and he says that numerous times that Jody's the only reason he's even trying. Jody's the only reason he hasn't wrapped a sheet around his neck and hung himself. It's pretty much what he says. Yeah, he's not going uh, through yeah. this again. No, no, the wrongfully convicted. No, um, but 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 he. Uh, what what I what I would be concerned about uh, what would be, would be that uh, people who listen to these calls uh, after uh, the property bond is denied, you know, saying you know what he is just a real a hole and he deserves where he is, uh, and I, I think that people do have to understand what you just said, which is can, can you just imagine the big letdown that was. He, he is not um, socially adept, let's say. And he, he does what a child would do. He just takes it out. He lashes out at everybody. He treats people, he treats people very, very poorly. Uh, the only people he can, the people that are closest to him, the people that are willing to pick up the phone. Uh, and uh, it, it must be very painful to listen to those calls, uh, you know, especially the month after the, the, month after the, uh, uh, the denial. It it is because he he really feels like nobody is nothing anybody does is good enough. He's he everybody else still has a life. 
I mean, I, I get how he's feeling, but he's also not taking into consideration that everybody else outside still has a life and life still goes on and everything hasn't stopped. And, you know, Jody's making phone calls trying to get people to donate money. And she's, you know, people keep saying no, after, there's no after no after no after no. And no matter how much she does or how many letters she writes, because he's got her writing letters to people. Um, nothing she does is good enough. And he's just getting angrier and angrier. And it's not, yes, he's definitely acting like an asshole. But I can justify it. I, I can totally understand how he's feeling. I, I can see the whole big picture. And it's... It's, this, it, it's all crushing. It, 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 you know, there was a call where I started to cry and I might get a little choked up talking to me for a minute, but they talk about how this has destroyed the family. Just this was a tight family and law enforcement, everybody's fighting with each other and law enforcement, Dolores is screaming that law enforcement did this. I mean, she's screaming into the phone. I don't remember exactly what she says, but she screams it into the phone for them to hear because she knows the calls are recorded and she knows they're listening. They destroyed this family. Sad. It's it's anything to win, right? This is if if you know if, if you're going you're, you are going into a trial, or your brother, or your father, um, your sister, son. Um, would you would you want a uh, prosecution that was that was really after the truth and was really willing to dig at some of the oddities that were going on here? Or do you want one that was playing the, playing this as a game and a game that needed to be win, irrespective of the consequences, the consequences being destruction of families, uh, you know, incarceration of innocent people? Well, ask yourself, filters, what would you want? And really, you know, us truthers, that's really all we want at the end of the day is to understand the truth. If Stephen is guilty, so be it. But there's just too much shit uh, that we want Convenient. investigated. Re release the damn rap. Um, why, why is it that you, you know, what, that you're so interested in protecting the verdict here, right? I mean, uh, if, if, the, if the evidence finds him guilty and there's plenty of it, why, let's test A23. Um, why, why, why is it that we're afraid to do a, a legitimate scrutiny of the evidence rather than this thing, which probably would have been completely sept, uh, swept under the rug had it not been for uh, Laura Riccardi and uh, Moira, help me with her last name. Um, Demos. Demos, thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I that one. <laughs> <It's a good laughs> one. <laughs> so yeah. So so th this this is not a game to win. Uh, this should this should be a, a sort of a mutual discovery for the for the facts. And you know, it's it's very very odd to me uh, that uh, we have a state who keeps on continuing to try and hide things. Uh, and it's just bizarre. I really feel like that it, even if I thought Stephen was guilty, that at this point, I would have some questions. Confirm that, let's go confirm he's guilty. You know what? I'm confident he's guilty. Are you confident he's guilty? Okay, great. Let's go confirm he's guilty. Let's shut all these, you know what I mean? Do that. Confirm he's yeah. guilty. And they, they don't even have the argument in place that, oh, that would just cost money. And if anybody, if any prisoner came forward and doing that, all of a sudden, the Kathleen state Kathleen Zellner will pay for it. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, if there was it's nonsense, paid for. You... It's paid for. What are you? No. Uh, I'm so confident. And, yeah, and, I'm, I'm a guilty. And, I'm so confident. There's no nonsense. Oh, go ahead. Peter, and I'd just like to add that Zellner is not in this for the publicity and the money as filters like to point out she was already rich yeah google how much is kathleen zellner worth that's like 50 million dollars something like that right yeah <laughs> she didn't think she had family <laughs> money her husband had money she had money yeah yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. And what I mean, so, and, and let's be real. I mean, I'm I'm confident that if anybody can get him out, it'll be her. But I mean, look at this level of corruption. There's a possibility she could be she could waste more than a decade uh, uh, worth of money, you know, fighting this. There could be no win for her. There could be no win for her with the way they're dragging this on. Stephen's not a he's not young. 
he's not in the great he doesn't appear his pictures i i don't know for sure yeah. but his pictures he's showing his age he's getting older i i hate to think this but i really feel like they're gonna drag this out and make sure that man never sees light because if they prove that he didn't do this they're so screwed this opens up yeah. such a can of worms any case that mark Weeg or tom fassbender um ken kratz just to name a few sherry sherry colhane Hmm. Oh my God! Do you Let's throw understand? Bushman in the pile. Yep. Do you ever have a run in a sweater or something, and you you pull it on something, <laughs> and your whole sweater unravels? Man. That's what this okay. is. One little thread is going to get stuck on a nail, and a lot more than just Stephen Avery's case is going to fall apart. Because if they did it to him, they did it to somebody else. He's not the only one. He's not right. the only one. Man, to walk did this too i don't he's not look at the ricky i'm not going to try to say his last name okay. yeah i'll let you guys say it i'm not going to try look at ricky i mean same players there's definitely something there this town there's there's a mess and it's it's going to come out eventually it's going to come out and i hope it comes out in time for steven to see the light of day i hope it comes out in time for dolores to see her son in the free world again mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. Uh, but let's get to the bottom of it. I mean, really. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy it what's is. going on. So, so I, I do have a final uh, call for us to listen to uh, before we uh, continue our conversation. Uh, and that is, uh, you know, when, when, I, when I ask, uh, you know, why, why Brendan? Uh, yeah, he, he might have he been, you know, so, so they're, they're looking for what, what you might call in a football game a Hail Mary. Right. Uh, oh, crap. Steven's getting out. Um, what can we do? Uh, we're going to take Brendan, of all people, uh, and we are going to sort of sequester him and we're going to use the read technique on him. Uh, not let him see his family, not let him see an attorney, not let an adult in for questioning or at least bring an adult that says she doesn't want to go in anyway, even if she's there. Uh, and we're going to start asking him questions. Uh, so why, Brandon? Well, let's take a listen to just a, a small snippet of his November 6th interview in Krivitz. So him and the same guy go goose hunting every, or every night? And Mike's brothers. Mike. Oh, and Mike's brothers? Okay. And he seen our vehicle there when he left, he said? You don't know? Okay. It's not too often that somebody's standing by your house, by the field, taking pictures of the van. You got dropped off from school. How many other people are in that school bus? Oh, 50, 60. Plus a school bus driver, right? When you're dropped off, it's such an event that someone's standing in your field taking a picture of that van. That you remember that too, don't you? Bus driver remembers it. Kids on the school bus remember it. The girl taking pictures, you remember that? Huh? I wasn't looking in the field. You'd get off that bus and start walking towards your house. Well, sometimes I'm talking to planes. Yeah. You remember that girl taking that picture. You're getting off the bus, it's a beautiful day, it's daylight, and everybody sees it. You do too. Do you remember seeing that girl standing there taking a picture? Maybe. Um, I don't remember. Brenda, come on. You do know, don't you? Brandon. You're not going to disappoint any of us. Think about that girl. Was that girl standing there taking a picture that day? Uh, it's either yes or no. I mean, I'm not putting nothing in your mind. You tell me if you remember that girl standing there taking a picture. Yeah. Was she? Huh? Why won't you tell me? I was just trying to think of if I'd seen her. Well, did you see her standing there taking a picture? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me that? Were you scared? Huh? Yeah. All right. So let, let me go over what he said a little bit. Uh, uh, I forget who does this interview, um, but he's asking Brendan questions, and, and mainly they're trying to get at uh, when when he got off the bus that day with Blaine, 
did he see Teresa there taking the picture? Um, and Brendan goes from no to yes in the course of two minutes. Yeah, I saw that. And and the and obviously, uh, it's quite obvious if you listen, if if you can uh, listen to this call, it's, you can find it on YouTube. Just Google Brendan Dassey, November sixth, Crivets interview. We'll put a link in the description. Um, you can listen to it for yourself. And and it's the same thing with Brandon. He, he will say anything because he is so non-confrontational. He cannot stand uh, people get in his face. Uh, and, and and now you you might argue, well, those those officers never even really raised their voices. Uh, but I'm sure they looked very intimidating to him, and they certainly had uh, a certain tone in their voice that might not have been elevated to be yelling. Uh, but they said they certainly said some very pointed things to him, and they told him, as they did in the read technique, basically exactly what they wanted him to say, and he exactly said what they wanted him to say. Right? Is uh, it uh, doesn't that pretty much summarize that uh, it, that November sixth interview? Yes, and our so, Dr. Sokman has done a, a wonderful project, including that where that's the main tipping point where they realize he's the weakest link, and they can get him. To topple like yeah. that, yeah, and and they, and they certainly used him like that. Uh, thank you for pointing in, in this in this hail mary that they threw at the end when they've got five days until Stephen is potentially uh, getting released on bond, uh, and they need to do something to keep him in prison. Now, why do I say? That? Uh, let, let's let's talk for a second about some of the things that Stephen might have been able to do. If or, or some of the things that might have that might have been possible that that would have been uh, bothersome for the prosecution if Stephen had uh, uh, had got, gotten out on bail, uh, I, I'll, I'll take I'll take the first two. If you if you, you give you give you guys a little time to think, the first thing uh, that strikes me is that uh, rather than Stephen being frog marched, uh, but frog march means marched in and leg irons. Uh, in, into uh, trial in front of the jury, uh, he he could he would have been in there wearing a, a suit and tie or at least you know something that wasn't uh, you know black and white striped, and I think that definitely would have had a, a, an impression uh, upon yeah. people um, that that uh, you know he was uh, you know is he a convict or he is he innocent? I remember one one clip I remember seeing of him. He's got those handcuffs on that cover your whole hands, and I the didn't cuffs them well. Yeah, the mittens. Uh, so, um, and and they make they make a point of uh, marching him out uh, in some of these uh, uh, January, and, and, and it's, you can hear it on the calls as well. In front of the, uh, you know, taking the long way, right, in front of the media, rather than going out the back to the to, to the elevator, right, that they could have avoided all the media contact, right. So, so the so the um, you know sort sort of the image that you get to set. Uh, with him being, uh, you know, actively uh, in, in, in jail, being escorted by police. I'm not sure that whether they cuff him to take him out or not, but parading him in front of the media, handcuffed, sets a tone. And they, they, want, they want that tone rather than him strolling in and out, a free man, uh, getting interviewed, you know, stopping for an interview with his attorney there, being able to say whatever they want, debunking the prosecution's points. Uh, it's a big deal, I think, uh, the fact that, you know, whether he would have been in, in prison or, or, or not from the perspective of the, of the jury. I, don't want to, I should say jail, not prison. Uh, that, that's number one. Number two, can you imagine uh, if he was able to do a, a lawyer supervised interview with somebody, say, like Aaron Keller, who does, uh, you should listen to the Aaron Keller call. I think Aaron Keller uh, is very fair. Uh, I, I, call, I call him a, a, truth, a truther. Uh, he seems to listen to Stephen and, and try and get to the bottom of his uh, meandering uh, conversations uh, to try and figure out what he's actually trying to say, really like uh, uh, Aaron Keller. Um, but can you imagine an interview, say, inside of Stephen's trailer uh, with Dean Strang, Stephen, and, and Aaron Keller, where they say, look, look what they did to this trailer. The prosecution is trying to tell you that, uh, that Stephen and Brendan uh, you know, chained Teresa to this bed, handcuffed her to this bed, uh, and shot her and stabbed her. Look what look what they did. They they, they cut off the baseboards. They cut the paneling. Uh, the headboard is gone. Uh, and how much forensic evidence did they find? Absolutely none. Hmm. Right. Uh, that, there, was, there was no. There was no such interview like that. 
right? Um, uh, that 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 happened. Uh, Laura McCarty did one kind of with Jody, but that didn't make any news until May, right? Until in, until uh, the series was released in what 2016. Yeah. Right. So so uh, you know there's re- you know St- Stephen could have been a very powerful advocate for himself uh, well, if he made so- himself. In- Go ahead. Also, if he'd have gotten out early enough, he could have finished his civil lawsuit and maybe became the millionaire. Well, yeah, now because so. by by well, uh, well, yeah, he had the settlement. I guess. Yeah, well, that was that happened in the middle. I mean, when the property bond first goes into play, when he starts trying to get out, no, it's it's the, it's the middle of January when it gets when the judge says he'll consider the property bond. He doesn't settle till sometime in February, and he settles because Marie Avery is saying he raped her in Barbara's basement, right. and Walter yep. Kelly advises him to settle. He needs good representation now with you know this for him. So he was kind of forced into the settlement. So when he got, if he got out, it depends on when he could have gotten out, if he would have been able to finish his civil suit or not, because that ended the civil suit right there. He wouldn't have been able to. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I think things, <laughs> again, it was awfully convenient that Teresa went missing when she did, as Bibi likes to say, right? Because Kasurik like and Vogel that. were on the precipice of being deposed. How convenient, right? Ten yep. days before Kasurik is going to be deposed, right? Who he's personally suing as an individual, uh, in addition to his, uh, you know, in addition to the county for, for their role. Uh, those just, depositions, uh, those depositions should have never stopped, and that was Steve Glenn and Walter Kelly who stopped them. Yeah, by the that way, was a terrible yeah, thing. that that yeah. was a bad decision. Those depositions should have continued on, but they wanted. They were putting everything on hold because they thought that there was no way Stephen was going to be, these charges weren't even going to make it to trial because there was just no evidence. I mean, they saw that, from the Steve Glenn and Walter Kelly saw that from minute one, that it was all bogus, that none of it made any sense, and they couldn't believe that it was going to stand up in court. And that is why they paused the lawsuit. And then the catalyst spirals out of control. Marie Avery pops up and is forced to settle depositions never happened yeah i, I thought i thought that um Kasurik, Kasurik had asked for a delay uh, because of the issue the issue is that is that right because it, uh it, Kasurik's, uh deposition was going to be 10 days i think from the 31st which would put it say around the 11th of november um, i don't know and, if he uh, asked or not but i know steve glenn says to Stephen avery very early on i think we should they actually had to file a motion to get this put. I forget what word he used, but there was actually a motion that Steve Glenn had to file in court to put the civil lawsuit on hold. For this, so it was Stay. Steve. Glenn, mm-hmm. It was Steve Glenn who halted yeah. all the depositions. Kasurik and whoever may have requested it, but I know it was Steve Glenn who filed the paperwork for it. At least that's yeah. how it appears in these phone calls. Yeah, I think there's a short-term component and a long-term component. And one thing for sure is they're going to need a lawyer to explain to us the legal mach- uh, machinations here. Uh, we I can think probably Kassar talk to Travis. wiggles out of it. Yeah, I think uh, I, th- I think that would be I think that would be good because I, I would really like to understand, you know, the detailed legal mach- machinations that went on there. Uh, a lot of people like to say, you know, that they got to Steve Glenn too, that they, that he gave him really poor piece of advice. Or he didn't try and convince Stephen uh, out of it, you know. Uh, if it w- would have just spent a little bit more time in prison, it often get awfully convenient that they find a salvage yard loaded full of evidence three days before the the testimony uh, of the, uh, the deposition oh, of Kasur. Three days, the eighth, right, November eleventh is the is the day. Or I, it could have been the tenth even. I don't. I don't. Um, Hearing Steve Glenn talk to Stephen Avery. I don't think I share that opinion. I think Steve Glenn was mm-hmm. genuine. I think Steve Glenn thought he was doing the right thing. I I, I don't share that yeah. opinion that people have that the lawyers were in on it too, or that they. I think they did the best they could with what they had. Nobody could believe yeah. what was going on. Nobody. 
Well, that means a lot coming from you. So I'm gonna uh, give Steve uh, Steve the benefit, Steve Glenn the benefit of the doubt on that. Um, it's easy to mon- it's easy to sit here and you want to use sports terms. I'll use mine, even nothing about sports. It's easy to sit here and Monday morning. It's very easy to sit here and do that. I I just really think that the people that were on Stephen's side did the best they could with what they had. Yeah. Yeah, there, there might have been better decisions. Uh, he might, yeah, um, that 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 could have that could have been made. And I don't really understand what the legal recourses are, which is why I would want to talk to a lawyer. But I would like to understand how Kasser managed to worm out of his deposition. Uh, and I don't think it was because Stephen Glenn put it on hold. I think it was because uh, he asked for it because of all the strangeness that was going on at Avery's. Uh, with it um, being but, that, with it being that close, yes, because I believe it's definitely after the eleventh. Steve Glynn says, put it on hold. I'd have to go back and look. Yeah. So you're probably, he, he might have been able to get it delayed. I know at one point he also, one of them went on and something about now it should just be dropped or dismissed or thrown out or something to that effect. Jody makes reference to that. Seeing Kasurik on the news saying that shortly after Stephen was arrested. Well, and none of these lawyers have probably ever had to deal with anything close to like this. No, this the national scale thing, lots of scrutiny, and I mean, I, I, mean, I bet Steve Glenn was probably used to suing people, but all of a sudden, when it comes when the murder comes up, he's like, "Oh, whoa!" All of a sudden, this is like a different kind of case. Yeah, yeah, um, and you know, you, you brought up Laura, and I, I want to say that because of the national attention, this was heard about all the way in the New York Times in New York City. And I don't know if Steven realizes, I, I think he does at this point, And I, I don't think he did at the moments that it was happening, but I'm so grateful that she wrote that letter and that she contacted Dolores and that she went out to Wisconsin because without her, none of us would know anything about the story. And she did so much. She, she was nonstop. She, I believe she spent about a month out there the first time she was out there and, uh, or the second time she was out there. And the amount of people she interviewed and the investigating she did and the, the leads that she followed up on. And she just came in and she made Dolor- Dolores refers to her at one point as her friend. And Dolores doesn't refer to anybody as really, really likes. Her. And Laura is so sweet to her. And you can just hear the way Stephen talks the way Laura talks to Steven on the phone, there's just such a care about her. I'm so, I'm so glad she came into his life and did all this. She could be his, he owes it all to her if and when he gets out. Yeah, that's high praise. And it's really true, isn't it? I mean, uh, no, nobody counted on uh, uh, 30, was it 32 million views or something like that? I don't remember what it is, but it's, you know, I, I, I remember, I remember making the star next to it when, uh, cause I was waiting to hear when they got involved. And I remember a Dolores making a comment about getting a, a letter from some woman in New York and just finding out that it was really hard and that just Stephen doesn't really care at first. He's like, yeah, whatever. What is she going to do? And Debbie really like talks against her and tells Stephen that he shouldn't bother with her, that she's just here to get a story. Thank God. And I don't know how they ended up hooking up because Stephen and Laura hooking up happens in that period of time when we're missing the phone call. And then all of a sudden oh. you you hear, yeah, she she appears and Stephen, his tone changes on her intentions and how he feels about her being there at a point in time when I don't get to hear it. It's in the January phone calls when he's in the hospital. And we don't hear any of those. So I'm glad he flipped. I'm glad that he gave her the chance. I'm glad he got to know her. And I'm glad he liked her. And I'm, I'm glad she was able to do everything she did for him. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, imagine his luck that somebody from New York would come across uh, on this case and what they found. Mm-hmm. Uh, incredible. Incredible. I'm getting a little conscious of the time. Um, uh does any uh, i think it's about time to wrap it up i think i think uh, so. like to ask we could go on you for guys days. If we could uh for your closing sure. comments who wants to go first 
Christy? You got the floor, um, Christy. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for listening to them, for reading them, for contacting me. I'm, I'm glad you're using them. I, I appreciate the feedback. Um, I, I, I can't stress how important it is to listen to these calls, that the little things you pick up, the little things that you can put together and add in two plus two suddenly equal four, or just little things that you've wondered, was this true? And then you hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Um, and it, it's it's just I understand that everybody doesn't have that amount of time, but I would recommend listening to as many as you can and just seeing seeing what you get from them. And by all means, come join us in Discord. We talk about them a lot. Um, we talk about a lot of things in the case, the foul play Discord server and Millbilly's YouTube channel. Um, and if you have any questions, we're always here to help. If you have any theories, uh, we'd, lo we'd love to hear them. Uh, we'd love to help you prove them. We'd, we'd like to help you uh, debunk them and make them stronger th theories than they already are. Um, join us. So Christie's calls, are, they had summaries are excellent. If you don't feel, oh my God, I'm not, I'm not going to have the time to listen to uh, hundreds of calls. But in her summaries, she, has, she points out, listen to this call. And those ones that she's highlighted as listen to, you should really listen to. Those are the important ones. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just once again, join us on our Discord channel. We have lots of research here you can look at and rooms full of it. Rooms full of it. We have telephone line for conference calls. We can talk. We're doing right now a conference call, basically. I think I think our biggest asset in the Fall Play YouTube channel is the researchers uh, themselves, uh, which we certainly have a lot of documentation. But just, just if if you were to try and estimate, BB, just between you and Christy, how many hours of research uh, you have uh, researching the the Stephen Avery, Brendan Dassey cases? What, what would be your guess? Uh, I'd say I have <laughs> definitely more than a thousand. Uh, hours myself put in over four years, probably 2000. Um, yeah. I've read more in this case than I've read in my entire adult life. Um, <laughs> so, so, so if, if you, it, it, if you want to talk to people that have been looking at the documents, I've been reading the stuff, the discord server is a place to come. I mean, uh, Christy also is involved in the, the NAM gossip Facebook group. Yes. Um, Members of the family are in that group, uh, I think, or they used to be. No, no, uh, no, no. No, okay. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 okay. No family. There's no family that, that's in the there. Other. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so come, come, and, come and join us and come and join us and talk. Uh, Bibi, uh, anything else? No, I'm, I'm good. It's, yeah. Try come on, Sammy, that. what do you got for us? <laughs> Actually, I just, I was just listening in. I've wanted to be nosy yet again. Um, but honestly, as far as there's, it's all this research is priceless. You can't even calculate the time, the effort, you know, that goes into this. And unfortunately, whether you like it or not, your emotions are going to get strummed. They do. That's that is. Do. Yeah, that is 100% true. And that's one of the look at we have people from all walks of life. Jeff, you specialize in cell phone stuff. We have lawyers, we have Kelly, who's a nurse, she has medical questions. And Dr. Silkman, who is just what is his what is he on um, yeah, PhD, yeah, PhD in microbiology? I, I mean, the, the, the health. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, the <laughs> amount of the amount of knowledge that we have between all of us here in, in the follow play Discord server, it's, it's just great. I've learned so much in the last couple of months joining up with you guys. It's been wonderful. I've you, you gave me back my passion for the case. It had died down a little bit. I'd gotten, and this has definitely brought it back to life. So I love what we do. I, I love our little group. I love the collaboration of everybody. I love it. It's, a bit, it's been a real interesting time. These last couple of years have been a real interesting time have, uh, to, to be uh, interested in this case because things were actually moving, unlike the uh, time between his initial sentencing and uh, 
you know, his his uh, d denial of his uh, first pro se motion. Um, things are happening. Uh, Kathleen Zellner is involved, and uh, you know she's obviously the, got the most exonerations of any lawyer in the entire United States. People wrongfully convicted, so we're glad she's on board. Uh, when somebody like Kathleen Zellner says, who's, "Who's who's using her own money and has you know probably close to half a million dollars, somewhere between three hundred and five hundred thousand dollars into it of her own money," saying Stephen is so obviously innocent, she's somebody you should listen to. Uh, and uh, if you can find the passion to do a little bit of research for the, for the wrongfully convicted, um, then th th they will they will certainly appreciate it. So thank you all for listening, and this has been a Fall Play production.